Cam. Well, I think it is serious because the public key cryptography has been used everywhere in the communication uh, network and also in the trusted platform. It's a cornerstone of today's cybersecurity. Uh, quantum computers will catastrophically break all the public key cryptography used today, like uh, RSA signatures, like a uh, Diffie-Hellman key agreement. Uh, so uh, that will be a real threat. Of course, the experts have different uh, predictions about the time frame. That is just tell how much time we have, and the threat is serious. Well, for most of the organizations, they should start to consider transition and migration. Uh, for manufacturers in their next generation of the products, they will need to uh, consider accommodate post-quantum cryptography. And for the protocol design, um, they should in introduce crypto agility. That means um, they should be able to uh, add new algorithms and remove the old algorithms. For the users, they probably should consider the budget cycle, especially for the government, for funding for the uh, each of the year, they probably need to replace their um, equipment. Uh, well, you are correct that uh, um, for the key encapsulation mechanisms, we call the KEM, um, it, um, it can be um, lattice-based. When it is lattice-based, it can be either uh, structured lattice-based or unstructured lattice-based. For, un, for structured lattice based, um, it is more efficient with the key size and uh, um, speed and everything to fit into most uh, existing applications. So that is the uh, advantage of the structured light lattice based uh, um, KEM. Uh, when we consider standards, we will consider diversity. So the diversity in the matter of the different uh, uh, kind of features and also different uh, uh, mathematics assumptions. Um, um, classical MACLIS is called classical. It is indeed pretty classical. Uh, the uh, original design uh, trace back to 1970s. Um, they are, um, their security is well understood. Um, however, classical MacLeese has a large public keys. In some of the applications, if they want, they need to transmit like uh, 20,000 bytes of the public key in some of the application, it might be a problem. So that will give us that um, uh, kind of a, a restriction that we can probably um, only, we cannot only standardize a single algorithm. Again, we need to consider the different features to fit into uh, the most applications. And also we need to have diversified uh, mathematics assumptions to make sure that it is the future resistance. So in summary, 
we are very likely to standardize more than one algorithm in the KEM category. We plan to release draft standards for public comments in 2022 to 2023 timeframe. That's our euro way to develop standards. Uh, we uh, will uh, get the public comments and resolve them. And then sometimes we will need a second time, uh, second period of public comments and before we finalize the standards. So we probably will publish standards in 2024. Please notice that this is not one standard, it's a suite of standards. It will include multiple algorithms and uh, multiple functions for key establishment, and also for digital signatures. So we will uh, publish step by step and it will take a few years to publish the whole suite of post-quantum cryptography standards. Um, quantum key distribution we call it QKD, definitely introduced a completely new um, key distribution method. But it can hardly be considered as the ultimate solution. Um, the further reason is that because it will require new interface about the communications, for example, you need to uh, you you each of the nodes in the network requires to have a capability to transmit or receive quantum keys. Um, currently, the network um, does not work that way, um, and also it will require to. Uh, have the authentication solution for the quantum key distribution. So that is that. And I also would like to say that quantum key um, distribution, uh, one, it is available. Definitely, it is a very valuable key component. Um, so it can be used together with the mathematics method to use the public key cryptography uh, to establish keys. And uh, the key through QKD can be used as a key component. The current NIST standards, like uh, 856C, allow to use the additional secret value for the key derivation. So from some point of view, uh, we can accommodate the key through QKD to NIST approved algorithms. Um, another is about the fifth 140 validation, if you mean NIST approved that way. Well, the uh, QKD unit may not be considered as a crypto module. Crypto module is the, the fifth 140 validation targeted on, right? So that it may not be in the scope of the fifth 140 uh, validation yet. And there are many um, levels and many layers of the QKD um, protocols. So it will be a kind of more complicated situation uh, to get the fifth 140 validation. So, but on the other hand, if the uh, list, like a symmetric key cryptography, like a AES, use uh, um, a key through the QKD, of course it is approved because the fifth 140 validation will test those uh, algorithms and uh, 
uh, if we consider QKD is a valid way to obtain the symmetric key, that is uh, a way to approve it. We are talking about different people here. Uh, for example, for um, semiconductor manufacturers, they should look into the postal quantum uh, uh, cryptography implementation in their chipset to see how these algorithms behavior, how they can work with other functions, the power consumption, and also the bandwidth, the space, and everything, and to make sure that they know uh, how this can work. For protocol design, they might think to try on some of the algorithms uh, through introducing those to the protocol. Currently, there are some people try hybrid mode. That means they will use the current approved algorithm like elite curve Diffie-Hellman together with a postal quantum cryptography. And then they will get two shared secrets. In the key derivation function, they will use these two shared secret value to derive a key. Through the hybrid mode, they will understand how these algorithms will work without the risk of the security. So, on the last but not least, the manufacturers should not commit any of the third round finalists to their products before needs to make final selection and before we publish the standards because the finalists may change and uh, what they committed on may not be next selection. So that is a risk uh, that should be noticed. Um, well, that is uh, uh, hard to predict. But based on our current experience, for example, like AES has been uh, used in the, in the products all over the world. But AES is not a national standard for many countries, of course. So the similar situation may happen in the future. Um, so that uh, uh, is understandable. Um, we work with different uh, standard organizations like uh, IETF, uh, IEEE, and also the Banker Association like the X9, and also like the Trusted Computing Group. Um, so we wanted to um, constantly synchronize to see how the NIST standards work in different application environments and to prepare them to adopt NIST standards. Tech